Many, many, many men. Welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving God all the praise, the glory, and the honor. I have such a wonderful testimony today in the mighty name of Jesus. God is so good, so good, so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're good. You're worthy. Thank you. I thank you. I thank you. God, you deserve the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I have such a joy in my heart and thankfulness. God is able. He's able. He's able. God is able. He's able to do it and turn it around in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to um, start with you from a verse today. It's coming from Isaiah 61, the 61st chapter and verse 1. Isaiah 61, 61st chapter and verse 1. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and the afflicted. He has sent me to, to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted, to proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to the physical and spiritual captives and freedom to the prisoners. Amen. That is from Isaiah 61 verse 1. And that is the Amplified Version. I like reading Amplified Version because of the fact that when, when it comes to the Amplified Version, you're able to get a better understanding of it. So, you know, it, you know, you can you can understand it a lot better. It goes into deeper and it explains it to you. So that's why I like reading the Amplified Version. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put it on the, um, excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the King James Version, excuse me, the NIV Version and read it to you as well. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim, proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for, excuse me, and release from darkness for, for the prisoners. Amen? Amen. So that's Isaiah 61, again, verse 1. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. I'm also going to read to you from Luke chapter 4, verse uh, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has appointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. And recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now that's powerful. The last line says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. <laughs> my God, my God. Let me tell you something. If you look at those two verses. Those two verses have so much in common that it's not even funny. I mean, it's so much in common, in common and, excuse me, and also on top of that, you can see that they both started off with how the Spirit of the Lord is upon them. Let me tell you something. When the Spirit of God is upon you, my God, you walk another way. You talk another way. You feel another way. The anointing saturates in you. It absorbs in you and you feel like so excited. Your, matter of fact, your bones are in joy. It's like fire shot up in your bones, literally. You feel so much joy. You feel happiness. You feel like this. Nothing can go wrong in my life. Not that it's not anything that can go wrong, but you feel that way because God has put such a peace in you. He's put such a majestic peace in you because you're his child, whether you're his son, prince, or his, his, his daughter, queen, or, 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 or princess. Whatever you are, male or female, God will put that peace on you. And believe me, when he says it's a peace that surpasses all understanding, it is literally a peace that surpasses all understanding. God will literally heal the brokenhearted. One thing about God, let me tell you something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. When God speaks of something in the Bible, when he uses Luke and he uses Jeremiah and Isaiah and every person that he uses in the Bible to speak prophetically his words, let me tell you something about God. When he uses them, okay, he uses them through the physical, speaking it verbally, speaking it out verbally. And then he also uses it in the spiritual. See, everything that's done in the spiritual realm has to be released before it's ever even mentioned or before it's ever even manifested in the physical realm. Amen. 
It has to be released in the spiritual realm first because that's how God operates. He operates with the spiritual before the physical. It's just like with Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's just like when God created man. When he spoke it out. See, it had already went into existence as he was speaking it out in the, sp in the spirit. Okay? Because he is spirit. So he had already released it in the spiritual realm first before it actually manifest. It started manifesting as he is speaking. You understand what I'm saying? So that's how God works. Even with his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus was there from the beginning of time. In, the, in John, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. The Word was with God, and the Word became flesh. The Word was God. The Word was, was with God, and the Word became flesh. Amen? So he was always there. He was always there in the spiritual realm. He was always there up in heaven with God Almighty, his Father. But when he spoke it out, that Mary shall conceive, and he sent his angel to be assigned to Mary to go delegate and go tell her this is what will happen, and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon her, and she will conceive. My God, that's powerful. When he spoke it, it was, went immediately into existence. Amen? And that's how God is. When the Spirit of God is on you heavy, whatever you speak, my God, my God, my God, <laughs> hallelujah, it shall be done. It shall be loosed on earth as it is loosed in heaven. It shall be binded on heaven, in heaven as it is binded on the earth because it goes into full force. It's no taking it back. It's done. It's literally done in the spiritual realm. Now, if it's something bad, of course, there's a way as a child of God with the power and the authority of God through the blood of Jesus of course, we can take it off of us. Amen. There's always a will in a way, especially through God, Jesus Christ. But I'm speaking about when God is using you, when you, when you have the, the spirit of him on you and you're high in the anointing and, and the oil is just dripping all over you. God will allow you to release things and it will be manifested in your life. That's why God says to study to show yourself approved, because you have to know the word, not the word to please your pastors and your bishops and your family members to impress your husband or your wife. No. You need to know the word for yourself so it can operate in your life and it can manifest. It can manifest and show how God is moving through you. Because a lot of times the people in the church, they don't understand and they won't never understand because of the fact that their mind is so physical. They're in a physical mind frame that they won't never understand the spiritual until they actually see it manifest in somebody's life. So what God does is God makes you a walking miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. He makes you a walking miracle so that way you can show the manifestation of his grace and his mercy and his power on your life. Amen. I went through so much stuff. Oh, my God. To, my goodness. 2001. This is the time of the World Trade Center. I was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy and enlarged heart. Amen. This is where my testimony comes in. An enlarged heart. I've had several kids over the years. Every time I got pregnant, my cardiomyopathy got worse. I, I, I get heart failure, technically heart failure. It starts to go down, my ejection, my ejection fraction. Um, my heart, meaning my heart gets weaker and, and it pumps, you know, differently. It, it it was one point where it was regurgitating blood, meaning it was literally throwing up or spitting back blood. That's why it's called regurgitation. So I had mitral regurgitation. Amen. But over the years, it kind of gotten better. And it went to not mitral regurgitation anymore, but mitral trace. So it was just a trace there. So that means it was an evidence of it there. Not that it was still spitting it back, but it still was an evidence that it was done and it was there. Amen. But how many people know God Almighty? And how many people know God can do some miracles in your life? Well, I'm here to tell you that God can. God can. I am a walking miracle. And I told God, I said, God, I want you to use me. God will give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. If you just seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and do his will and his way, he will put it on you. He will allow you to have your desires of your heart. My God, my God, my God. I said, Lord, use me. Make me your walking miracle, Lord God. I want you to be manifested in me so that people can see your glory and your grace and your mercy on my life, Heavenly Father. And that's what God has done. Let me tell you what God has done. That was 2001. It's now almost 20 years later. So almost 20 years I had been with a cardiomyopathy and enlarged heart. My heart was bigger than normal. Amen. And uh, God has always put his grace on me. But when I told God that I wanted to be a walking miracle and I wanted him to be manifested in me and I was doing the, doing what he wanted, he gave me the desires of my heart. 
Today I went to the cardiologist. Hallelujah. The cardiologist was so happy to see me. He said, my God, my God. Mind you, the cardiologist is a Christian as well. He looked at me and said, my God, my God. He said, I have good news for you today. He said, your heart is perfect. Your heart is restored. Your heart is in good condition. So just to confirm, I said, well, it's not enlarged anymore. Just to confirm to hear his answer. Because I wanted that confirmation because I know God. And I know my miraculous working God. Hallelujah. He said, no, it's not even enlarged. Your heart is perfect. Your heart is normal. It is working at the 55% like it's supposed to. That's a normal heart. It works at a 55% ejection fraction. Hallelujah. He says, it's a miracle. I said, yes, that's a miracle. He said, what you doing? I said, hmm, you exercising? I said, no. I said, I walk a lot. He said, oh, continue to walk. I said, uh, but I believe in God. He said, oh, yeah. He said, oh, yeah, the apostle. He said, the apostle Paul said that God told him my grace is sufficient. Before he could even finish, I said, yes, my grace is sufficient enough. Amen. 